Hi, this is Stuart Weems and welcome to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand strategies, insights and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And before I get started today in what is a little bit of a longer episode than usual, I just wanted to highlight or let you know that I've just finished writing a, an ebook, um, which is titled How to Navigate the Mortgage Market in 2023. Uh, and really what I've included in that ebook is really everything you need to know or think about or consider uh, before you consider refinancing this year, uh, just because there's a lot going on, particularly with fixed interest rates and interest only terms expiring and so forth. I just wanted to walk people through some loan structure considerations, borrowing capacity, uh, how to ne- negotiate the, the best interest rate discount. I give you some examples of uh, what we've recently achieved. Uh, and you can download that. You don't need to give us your email address or name or anything like that. Uh, just go to prosolution.com.au forward slash ebook uh, and you can just click that button and it'll download straight away. Uh, and if you uh, find the information in that ebook useful, which I hope you do, uh, please uh, share it to any uh, family, friends, or colleagues that you think will get some value from it. So that website address again is just prosolution.com.au forward slash ebook. I'll have the link in the the show notes right at the top uh, in case you need it. Okay, so let's get into this week's topic, which um, by coincidence is pretty topical at the moment. Uh, That is, I'm going to talk about uh, the potential for the US to slip into recession uh, and that to potentially crash the stock market or certainly uh, stock markets are likely to fall if that occurs. Um, And there's been heaps of volatility, obviously, more recently with you know, the, the uncertainty around banking and um, the US's regulator's response to that, uh, I think uh, those issues will dissipate relatively quickly, probably over the course of the next one or two weeks. But a longer term concern is that the US will slip into recession. Obviously, the Federal Reserve in the US has been hiking interest rates um, faster than any time in history. Uh, hiking them higher than what they are in uh, Australia. And so far, the US economy has been more resilient than what most expected. Uh, And that might mean that the US has to push uh, interest rates higher. Uh, And a consequence of doing that might be that you push the economy into recession. Uh, And if history repeats itself, we know that every recession over the last 100 years has occurred, stock markets have fallen. Uh, And so if that uh, situation plays out, my question then is, and really the topic of today's podcast, what do you do if that's going to happen? So really, obviously, central banks around the world have been fighting inflation uh, and they're using monetary policy to do that. That is higher interest rates. Uh, And there's really three scenarios that could occur as a result of that intervention. Uh, A hard landing, a soft landing or no landing. So a hard landing means that the Federal Reserve pushes interest rates too high, as I previously talked about, and it does actually slow the economy to the extent that it goes into recession. Uh, A soft landing scenario is sort of a bit of a Goldilocks scenario, just right. You know, that the the Federal Reserve hikes rates just enough to cool inflation and, and, and also wage inflation, but not too high that it causes a recession. Uh, And a no landing scenario, which is probably less likely than the other two, is if the US continues to be resilient, the US economy continues to be resilient, and actually the Fed Reserve has to push interest rates much higher than what we all expect today. That's kind of a no landing scenario. So the big issue that's causing the Federal Reserve, the central bank in the US, uh, a lot of concern is wage inflation. It's quite high in the year to... Uh, end of February, wage inflation was 4.6%. So incomes are rising, people have more income, uh, and therefore they've got more to spend, and therefore you're underpinning uh, consumer demand and therefore inflation. And, and what, what the bank really needs to do is get that wage inflation down so that when they eventually bring down inflation, it stays down, it it's, it's remains at, at a normalised level. Uh, The US unemployment rate did rise in in February, which might be an indicator that um, uh, markets are slowing. It it increased from uh, 3.4% to 3.6%, but mainly because of the participation rate increase, so there's more people were actually looking 
for work. You know, the good news though, when you look at the three month annualized wage inflation, it's actually um, slowing down. It's actually 3.6. And you look at the 12 month wage inflation, 4.6. So, at least on current data, it's showing that interest rates are starting to potentially cool the labor market and wage inflation is showing, uh, slowing, I should say. But that, this is our problem. Or at least uh, as investors, this is what we need to be focused on is what is the labour market doing in the US? And that will, um, to some extent, inform us about you know, how high the, U- the central bank needs to push interest rates. So I think most economists believe that uh, the US will go into recession. Um, and the reason for that is that the labour market has been pretty resilient and, and as a result, um, the central bank has had to uh, raise interest rates higher. Uh, although it'd be very interesting to see what they do uh, this month, uh, which we'll find out the day after this podcast is released. So obviously can't talk to that. Um, uh, but the problem is that the stock market certainly hasn't priced in a recession. So when you look at va- equity valuations, particularly in the US, in the S&P, um, the, the PE ratio is still relatively high. It's trading about 20 times. Um, compared to a long-term average of, of 16 times. And if you look a bit deeper at the financial theory, uh, the reason why uh, equity valuations haven't adjusted is potentially it hasn't adjusted to reflect higher interest rates. So if you think about it, you can either invest in equities or you can invest in something that's safer like uh, bonds. And in Australia, the, the big four bank have been issuing quite a few bonds lately. Um, They're tier two capital uh, investment grade rated bonds. So really they have some risk, I guess, but my my, um, assessment would be that they're almost zero risk. But they're not zero risk, but they're almost zero risk. Uh, And those bonds are paying around about 6, 6.2%. So really, if you're going to invest in uh, equities, you want to be fairly compensated for the risk. Uh, And so you'd want to earn something well in excess of 6.2%. Maybe you'd really want to earn, say, 9.5% to 10% uh, for that to be attractive. Um, And based on current modelling, which really um, includes where stocks are valued at today in terms of how cheaply or how expensive they are, uh, you look in those long-term models, uh, it's predicting, and it's a pretty good predictor in terms of the methodology that research affiliates use, it's predicting that future 10-year returns in the US market will be between 3 and 8%. So why would you invest in the US market and potentially face 3 to 8% in terms of returns when you could just buy a, a bond from one of the big four Australian banks at 6.2% with very little risk? So my point here is that, you know, if the US does go into recession, it's beginning that process with what I would say is elevated stock prices. Now, that's on an S&P 500 level. Of course, there's sectors and, you know, financials, for example, were certainly cheap before there was volatility around the banking sector over the last week or so. They're even cheaper today. So, you know, that the financial sector in the S&P 500, very, very cheap. Um, the technology, not so much. Uh, and so I'm just making comments about the broad-based index in terms of its valuation. It's not to say that there's no money to be made in the US. It's really just a commentary on what could happen um, if the US does slip into recession. And all I'm saying is that we're at a high point, so we've got more to lose if we have more economic headwinds. And in fact, when you look at Um, history, you know, what has the share market done every single time over the last hundred years when there's been a recession? Uh, Well, I've got a a chart with the links in the show notes and the blog on the website, of course, and it shows every single recession since 1928, the share market has fallen lower when that recession began. Now, they've got a really weird way of calling a recession in the US, and they tend to call it maybe so six months after they started. So arguably, we could be in a recession uh, right now. We just don't know, uh, according to how the um, US record it. But the point is that if if we do hit those economic headwinds, chances are the US share market's going to fall. Now, I should make the important point at this juncture that the Australian economy is very robust, uh, mainly thanks to um, iron ore and coal and 
you know, all those raw material exports that we're lucky enough to have. But the um, re reality is that the Australian market is pretty robust. We don't have, the central bank doesn't have the wage inflation problems to attack that like the US bank does. Uh, and so it's very unlikely, I think, uh, and most uh, commentators would agree that Australia is going to slip into recession. However, the US market is the largest developed economy in the world. It's 15 times larger than Australia. So if it catches a cold, you know, so do we. If its market falls, uh, so do we. Now that informs us what happens in the short term, um, but we probably need to be less concerned about that in the longer term. Although if that global economy does slow, um, global demand will slow as well as a result. Now, of course, I'm not saying a US recession is a fait complete. You know, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen. It is entirely possible that a soft landing scenario uh, will play out. That is that the um, Fed Reserve has done a good job in terms of raising interest rates, but not too high. Uh, and it is a very unique scenario about what caused this inflation. If you think about it, Really, you can summarise it by saying COVID happened, we got locked up, a lot of stimulus was rolled out, you know, the US government sent out checks to people, they were locked up, so all they could spend was on goods online, so the amount of spending on goods was ridiculous, and that what that's what sort of started the inflation um, spiral. Uh, and then post-COVID, we all let out, and then we had all this pent-up demand for services, whether it's uh, travel or restaurants or so forth, so... Demand for services has been unusually high, but that too will flow through uh, eventually. So it's, it could be possible that all this will sort of unwind in a more orderly fashion uh, and uh, the, you know, the, the economy will continue on both in the US and in Australia. And obviously you could argue that that's what the market thinks, given it hasn't priced in a recession yet into a current equity prices. But of course, the market could be wrong. So then let's talk about, you know, if you assume or let's just assume that um, the US market does go into recession and based on history, we can expect then the US market to fall in value. Uh, what should you do now as an investor? And that's really kind of the premise of this uh, podcast or the topic of this podcast. So, of course, you could reduce the amount that you've invested in shares and increase the amount as a result that you invest in safer asset classes like bonds or even cash. But there's overwhelming evidence that that would be a, a big mistake for two reasons. Uh, the first is that, of course, the US might not go into recession. And by taking a, a, a really large position on the basis that you think your you know, gut instinct or assessment is correct, of course, you could be wrong and uh, you know, miss out on the opportunity costs, you know, what, what the US market does in the interim. And the reality is that no one has developed, no one in the world has developed uh, a reliable method for predicting what markets will do in the short run. Uh, and secondly, the second reason is that underinvesting is dangerous. And this is really where most of the evidence is. Because if you're underinvested, not only will you miss the worst days of the market, but you'll also miss the best days of the market. And when you take the best days of the market out, it has a massive impact on returns. So I've got another chart in the show, link in the show notes and on the blog. Uh, and it looks at um, if you were invested in the US market from 2003 through to uh, 2022. So really uh, almost last 20 years. Uh, if you missed the 30 best days of that during that time period, uh, your return is 0.8 of a percent, so less than 1%. If you stayed fully invested during that period of time, your total return is almost 10%. So it shows you only need to miss the 30 best days and you know, you've essentially wiped out your total return. The problem is that the, say, 10 best days and 10 worst days tend to occur at a similar time. So they occur within two weeks of each other. So there's your problem, is that if you, if you underinvest, if you reduce your exposure to equities, you're going to really miss those best days. There's a couple of other um, links to articles that I've shared in the blog as well. Uh, one article, a bit old, it's from 1995, but it looks at uh, an investor that invested over a 16-year period but picked the worst day of the year to, to invest. So they invested in tranches, equal tranches over 16-year period but picked the highest point of the market in each of those years. Um, the return, they still uh, generate a return of 8% per annum 
It, so you can get timing com- incredibly wrong, but remain invested for the long term, and your return's still good. Uh, there's another article that uh, Morningstar put together um, that uh, talked about actually what you're better off to do is just invest all your money up front, and it actually doesn't matter if you you know if your timing is terrible. Uh, as opposed to you know, drip feeding money into the market over 20 years. Now, uh, this this is going to depend. You know whether you apply this uh, really depends on you know, how much you already have invested in the market and whether you're just changing your asset allocation um, or whether that's new monies and so forth. But the point is that both these articles, the theme from both of these articles, is that um, being under invested and trying to guess what the market will do in the short term. Uh, is a looking at the evidence is the quickest way to underperform in terms of returns but there are things that you can do um, to accommodate the risk of recession while still remaining fully invested in the share market the first one which i've spoken about before um, in a previous episode is tilt towards value so that is adopt a value-based approach to investing and essentially what that means is you're trying to invest in a way that avoids companies that are overvalued. Um, so you're using statistical filters to filter out those companies that look expensive. Uh, and therefore, what you're arguably doing is building a portfolio of relatively cheap companies. Uh, and I did an episode on that last month, so you can certainly look out for that. The second um, way of accommodating the uh, recession risk is by adopting a quality factor approach. Uh, And you might do both of these two things as well in terms of value and quality. So a quality factor is, uh, factor investing is really just a a rules-based approach towards investing um, that skews your portfolio towards uh, companies with certain attributes. And a quality factor attribute is really uh, strong earnings, strong dividends, uh, strong balance sheets, so a low debt, um, good cash flow, you know, all those sorts of characteristics suggest that the company is high quality and quality companies tend to outperform in times of recession because obviously the weaker companies die and the strong companies are able to remain and capitalize on less competition and thirdly as a result of you know being overweight towards value uh, overweight towards quality what you will be as a result is underweight traditional market cap indexing and so traditional market cap indexing I think Um, exposes you to the full risks of a potential recession uh, where the value approach and quality approach, uh, I guess, accommodates or mitigates some of those risks. Now, there's other reasons why we might have, I mean, value is cheap, which is what I was saying last month in my uh, episode on value investing. Um, So there's other reasons why we want to adopt those uh, different SKUs in our portfolios, um, not just because we're fearful of a recession, um, and that's really important to note as well. So really, in summary, other than making those small tilts in your portfolio towards different investment methodologies, um, the, the, our approach or response to the potential recessionary risk is to really not do anything, uh, do nothing at all. And really, most people that have listened to this podcast should realise by now that I am solely focused, my sole goal is maximising average returns over the next 5 and 10, 15 years and not being too concerned, or which is to say not concerned at all, about what returns might be over the next one or two years. That's not important because as investors, we're going to remain invested for a long period of time. And if I can earn a, an average return of 8% over the next 15 years, uh, that's going to help clients achieve their goals and certainly help you achieve your goals. Uh, you don't need to swing for the fences and try and earn a 10% return this year. But as a result of taking a, such a short-term uh, time horizon, you end up, you know, compromising in terms of longer term average returns. Okay, a little bit longer this one uh, this week. Uh, apologies for that. Don't forget that ebook that I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, uh, prosolution.com.au forward slash ebook. And until next week, bye for now.